Okay, wine moms, I have an announcement. I will no longer be taking a commission from my Zaya Active Sales. Instead, I want you all to shop through the Mothers Without Borders event when you visit my Zaya Active website and snag up your favorite active wear. Every quarter, I will take the proceeds from the event and donate them directly to Mothers Without Borders. This is a nonprofit organization that aids orphaned children and empowers the local women living in Zambia. I recently had the pleasure of meeting this organization's head operators and connected with their mission. Now, since a 33-hour flight going across the world would leave me in a constant state of pure and utter panic, I am donating my revenue instead of my lack of laborer or shift skills. (laughs) Nobody wants that. To do your part to help and join the cause, all you have to do is shop the Mothers Without Borders event on myzaya.com backslash amadon. Or you can donate directly at motherswithoutborders.org. The Mommy Wines Podcast is a Mommy Wines Network and Emma Don production. Brought to you by Coffee Over Cardio, NakedWines.com, and Zaya Active. today because I'm wearing the lashes but I didn't put my contacts in first so (laughs) oh yeah it took me a hot minute to get my contacts in oh yeah after the lashes that sounds like that might be a little bit (laughs) sketchy yeah (laughs) but I'm looking out um you are from Utah right uh yes I am I grew up in Riverton so oh my God. super That's close like, to you, right? Yeah, super close. I'm looking out the window of my office right now because it's the first day I can actually <laughs> see the mountains. Yeah. It's not a blizzard. And oh my. They are packed and they are beautiful. Yeah. And we just got back from the pool a little bit ago. So <laughs> totally different lives we're living I right now. don't miss Utah 100%. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> I I love snow and I love winter, Do you? Uh, but I am kind of looking to move out of Utah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's so pretty, especially in the summer. I love the summer there. The mountains are just unbeatable for real. See, I like the mountains better when they're snowy. Oh, really? <laughs> but. But it's crazy because, like, everyone is like, oh, I go hiking, and I do this, and there's all these yeah. trails, and I tried to Google it because I'm like, well, if I'm going to be here, I might as well, like, become a, a as much of a full-blown Utahan as I can, but of you can't course. Google, like, I don't know, like, nothing came up. It's like this thing where oh. you must just have to drive over there and figure it out, or, like... <laughs> Something. You'll have to talk to people. I know there's some apps that have all the different trails on there and they track where you go and your mileage and everything. There's Whoa. some decent things popping up that might help you out there. Maybe. That's not yeah. sense, though. I'm not like the outdoor enthusiast right. as all of my neighbors are, but. <laughs> gotcha. Well, that's okay. That's okay, too. You know. But they are pretty. I, I do like driving like through the canyons and stuff. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you have your little one, so that kind of makes indoors a little easier sometimes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You have kids, too, don't you? I do. I have four kids. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We're always having parties at my house. Just, you know. (laughs) You're the party house? (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Anytime one friend comes over, it just feels like a circus. So, you know, you just have to get used to it. Go with the flow. (laughs) You just get used to the noise. Just let it be what it is, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I can, I can imagine. I have the one, and he is just a complete handful. Yeah, <laughs> he he's I, the best, and I'm obsessed with yeah. him. Yeah, but well, it's like it's like they know. play together, and sometimes it takes the pressure off of me. So if they're not fighting, that is, then it's kind of helpful to have them more than one. <laughs> so just saying, you know, it's got its ups and downs for sure. See, that's where I've been lately because I've been looking at fostering and adoption. Oh, yeah. And I was like, man, if I could just have one more, you know, yeah, like they right. could play with each other and then I could get some stuff done. <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> I, I don't want to, you know, start a 
you know, a family band or a circus. Yeah. But <laughs> right, or a baseball team. Yeah. It mostly works. You've got the right idea. It mostly works. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um so the audience knows I didn't even do an introduction. I'm here oh. today with Amber. Um, yes. Go ahead and share a little bit because you are the owner or founder of Maglash. Yeah, and I'm cr- I'm currently wearing the lashes now. Woohoo! And, and af- like after I put them on, I blink like really fast, like 20 times, and then they're comfortable. <laughs> oh, nice! I feel like I try to get them like way, 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 way on, like super close right. to like the bottom. Yes. Um, and then like, I'll just like blink like really, really fast. And then like, they just like <laughs> form themselves and then they're good to go. Smart. That sounds like a good little practice you've got going on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, my kid's dad and I split up at the beginning of this year. Um, and so I've been kind of looking for some business opportunity slash job that I could do. You know, I wanted to get my independence back and as a stay at home mom, that's so hard to do. I can't just go out and get some, I mean, I could, but you know, regular eight to five job with it's all hard. these kids here. Yeah. So I just, I just kept my eyes open for a while and, you know, kind of put it out to the universe. Like, what can I do? You know, look, looking for opportunities, whatever. And, um, I was wearing these magnetic eyelashes like a year ago, but I had to buy like a hundred pairs to try to find ones that actually worked. And I kept modifying them and changing them because it's such a great idea. Like I hate mascara. I hate washing my mascara off. I hate chemicals. So I wanted it to work so bad that I just (laughs) kept like basically making my own and finally got like the most perfect style and the perfect way to wear them. And all my friends were having me make them pairs and I was ordering in bulk by this point. I'm like, oh my goodness. Why am I not just selling these and making some money off of my time? And everybody was complimenting them. So finally, I just was like, I got to do this. It's like the most perfect opportunity. How did I not see it sooner? (laughs) The holidays are fast approaching. And what would make a better gift for the wine lover in your life, or even maybe yourself, than a NakedWines.com wine box? I have loved trying the NakedWines.com wines, and my taste palette has definitely become more sophisticated. Plus, all the wines from NakedWines.com are crafted by independent, passionate winemakers, not big label brands that have more additives in their bottles than actual wine itself. Get a NakedWines.com wine box delivered, filled with wines made with love directly to your door this holiday season. Use code MOMMYWINES50 to get six bottles for only $34.99. That's MOMMYWINES50 to get six bottles of wine for only $34.99 from NakedWines.com. Or you can go ahead and click the link in the show notes below. Just launched on um, social media and just I'm doing a subscription and also one-time purchase. And it's been great. I have all these people that are starting to enjoy them as much as I do. I just feel like it's a great way for moms, especially. We're just so busy and active. We need something easy, fast, healthy, you know, all of that stuff. And it just kind of fits all of it. So I was so excited when it started, you know, just having people enjoy them as much as I do. So yeah, it's been great when I want to do like something a little extra and I've been wearing yeah. them multiple times. It's not something that I have to um like take off and throw away and then get a new pair. Like I think I've worn them right. like maybe four or five times now. Yeah. And yeah. it's they're just awesome. And I'm not somebody who is like super into like the beauty and cosmetics industry. Sure. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to something that I can just do like this where there's like no glue or chemicals or yeah (laughs) you know I went with my old co-host she was the co-host for a few episodes but she was like super into like the permanent cosmetics and beauty industry and you know makeup and all this stuff Mm -hmm. and I went to like her salon a couple times and I went with her for a couple appointments to a couple different things and she's like tattooing cutting injecting (laughs) um, perming gluing all of this (laughs) stuff to her face and I'm like 
what if just one of those times there's like some kind of reaction? Oh, yeah. Because you know? there's like all of these chemicals like super sure. close to her like eyeball because they're like <laughs> gluing so eyelashes on and they're right. like, tinting them and perming them. And I'm like, oh, I know. Oh, my God. It was like the yeah. after effect was nice looking. But then I'm right. like, I know what like what if like that's so risky because it's so yeah. close to your eye like right you could easily like get some kind of infection or if like the esthetician like changes the oh. the mm-hmm. glue or yeah like if she changes like brands like what if you have you've never had an allergic reaction before but what if there's a new brand and yeah. you do it like could be eyes. Right. You and like that, <laughs> I used to be way into eyelash extensions. I love them just because lashes, I'm like you, like I'm really a minimalist makeup wise. I don't really wear a ton of makeup, like really at all. I just don't have the time or patience for it either. And so, but I want my lashes done. I feel like my lashes make your whole face, you know, like you can throw lashes on and you look way, you feel way more confident than yeah. zero makeup. So I love that it's just quick and easy and you know, like you said, <laughs> there's no, there's no scary side to that. Like, I mean, unless you poke your own eye, but that's, <laughs> that's I've, I've done that. That could happen. <laughs> I've done that. And it oh, hurts, right. but I, I still have vision. <laughs> Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> right. Yeah. This, oh, I think yeah. it was like the first time I was trying and I watched, I went onto the website and I watched the videos, like the little cards that you sent yeah. for me to do. God. And because, you know, I'm a rule follower. I follow oh, directions. <laughs> I've built Ikea furniture before. So. Nice. <laughs> That's a feat right there. That's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. After that, I was like, okay, I'll follow the directions. <laughs> oh, good. I know, right? I should put on my thing that if you can build Ikea furniture, you should be able to put my eyelashes on. <laughs> yes. Like but. with your eyes closed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And then yeah. I, got, I watched the video and I thought it was so funny because in the video you're like, this is not your everyday lash. It might take <laughs> you two or three times to get it down. And True. Yes. I feel like I think everything in the beauty industry should have that disclaimer. Oh, like, you're right. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> like so it, true. Just because you buy this eyeshadow palette doesn't mean that you're going to be, you know. Oh, Yes. Whoever, you know, Jeffree right. Star, to be this the end, fancy like, makeup the the artist. <laughs> right. No, that's true. I have had a couple people, you know, message me after a couple tries and they still can't get it. And that's totally fine. We all have our learning capabilities different than others. And honestly, I couldn't, I don't think I could still put on a glue on falsy. I've never been able to do a glue on falsy. Really? So, yeah. I've, I've done it one time and Did it you? actually, yeah, it actually turned out pretty decent. Oh, nice. Well, maybe I could try again, but now I guess I don't need to. But well, yeah, you don't need to now. <laughs> right. And plus, yeah. like, that glue comes free. So God only knows what's in it and it smells. Oh, seriously, <laughs> huh? Yeah, I did this. I've been doing these little side gigs lately. I mean, I guess it's called cosplay where you kind of dress up and just different costumes or whatever. And we did this fancy one for this gala and we dressed up at these as these samba dancers. And all of the other girls were wearing, like, these crazy glue-on falsies, which were gorgeous and beautiful. But I was like, no way, dude. I'm wearing my magnetic glam lashes. That's all. Like, I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to see. Blah, 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 whatever. (laughs) By the end of the night, these girls are, like, pulling off their lashes. There's glue everywhere. It's just, you know, a mess. And I'm like, oh, I'm so thankful for my lashes. (laughs) And they're like, we need those ones. I'm like, yep, yep. These ones are so great. I just, oh, they're the best. I love um, the uh, container they came in with, like, the little oh, magnetic yeah. pad. Cause, yeah. And it's funny because I have a container exactly like that. That um, I, bought, I bought it off of Amazon because I needed a compact mirror for my, just yeah. for my purse. Oh, cool. And it, yeah. And it's funny. The only way I can tell the difference is that the mirror one that I bought has, like, uh, I don't know, some kind of, like, marble-looking thing at the back. And I'm, like, digging around in my purse because if I wear them, I take the thing just in case I want to take them off. Sure. And I'm, like, digging around in my purse and I open it up and I'm, like, oh, wait, I don't need this other mirror anymore. Nice. Heck, yeah. Two in one, right? Two in (laughs) one. 
Yeah. It's nice too because the mirror, having it be able to be like, you know, handheld and closer, you can see a little yeah. better. It does so help for nice. sure to put them on. I've I also just... noticed like as you wear them more, they get easier to put on. Not only that, but they stay on better. I feel like when I first started wearing them, I'd have to adjust them here and there throughout the day. But now I don't have to as much. And I don't know if it's just because I'm used to not touching them or I just p- apply them closer to my lash line, kind of like you were talking. You want to yeah. get it super, super close to your lash line so that it looks natural. Yeah. So I feel like that's like number one important thing is to get them super close to your lash line. Well, that little handheld mirror definitely helps. Yeah, for sure. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I just went into my fridge. I, I don't think I've done a sip or spill review on my podcast for a while oh just because I, yes. I typically do them when I have like in-person guests oh yeah <laughs> but I just went into my fridge and I got a white claw and I tried it for the first time the other day oh yeah and it's freaking delicious yeah I saw on your Facebook post or something the other day about how you went to the grocery store to grab those <laughs> Well, yeah, because, like, I would have to go all the way to Riverton, which is not Uh-oh. far, but, like, I yeah. just don't feel like it because it's been blizzarding for three days. Oh, my goodness. Everywhere's far when it's blizzarding. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I just had a massage. The roads are shit. I don't want to drive to Riverton. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And Those like, work. <laughs> yeah. And I keep forgetting because, like, I think I could go in to, a, like, a market or a grocery store and still pick things up just because like I haven't had to buy alcohol for the longest time because I get it de- like delivered so I have oh, to go yeah. get it from Naked Wines but so I haven't had to buy anything and I keep forgetting I'm like oh yeah I live in Utah I have to drive to like this <laughs> specialty store right and, so I'm like, that is different about living in Florida for sure I mean you go to the beach and like there's just bars everywhere and stuff it's definitely a different feel out here for sure <laughs> I know. I don't think I've been to a bar twice. Yeah. (laughs) In Utah. I went and did karaoke at that one in Draper. It was really fun. You should hit that one up. I don't remember what it's called, though. It's on State Street and almost 123rd. Have you been there to karaoke? Uh Uh-uh. Yeah, you'll have to go. They have a great stage. I feel like (laughs) all the bars are on State Street. It's just like a line of like tattoo (laughs) shops and lawnmower salesmen and Car dealerships. Oh, you didn't bars. you didn't grow up in River or there, so you wouldn't know. But State Street used to be where all the teenagers would hang out and drive up and down and you would like look for other cars of teenagers, right? To like my you know, ex make used new to say friends. that he did that. Yes. He would <laughs> he called it cruising State Street. Exactly. Yep. Oh my god, what a weirdo. <laughs> That's so funny that you say oh, that because I love it. That was one of the things because, like, when I was a kid, you would go to like the roller rink or like the drive in <laughs> yes. cinema, right? But no, oh, he's yeah. sitting there, he's like, Yeah, I drove across town because he grew up in Kearns, okay? Yeah, he's yep. like, I had to drive all the way across the valley <laughs> and just to cruise State Street. And I'm like, What yes. what, what would you do? Like, there's nothing for teenagers, and he's like, You no. just drive up and down. Right. With your windows down, like <laughs> listening to your blaring music. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious right. that you brought that up because I was like, no one ever did that. You're like, <laughs> no, it's true. Everyone did it. I promise. He wasn't the only weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. You yeah. know what it reminds me of? It's like one of those, like, like the 50 style movies, like Greece. Yes. When yeah. they like drive up and down with their cars and like right? go into the parking lots and just hang out in parking lots. Yep. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Except for they all had convertibles. That mm-hmm. would have been way fun. Well, it's Utah. It's Salt Lake. Like you don't it's want a convertible cold. here. <laughs> exactly. It's too cold. It's too cold. <laughs> oh my gosh. For real. That's hilarious. I cannot believe you even brought that up. That's so funny. I I never thought I was going to hear anybody else say anything (laughs) about it because I for sure thought he was lying. Oh my gosh. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. No worry. He's not. (laughs) That's hilarious. Are you a coffee lover just like me? Sipping my morning Java is the only way I can keep up with my toddler and busy lifestyle. That's why I love coffee over cardio. Coffee Over Cardio is a premium coffee company started by female entrepreneur Abby Scott. 
Whether you love a good flavored blend or a strong roast, Coffee Over Cardio is ideal for any jitterbug. They are also carb-free, keto-friendly, sugar-free, and gluten-free. So pretty much that means they're completely guilt-free. Try Coffee Over Cardio's most popular flavors today, French Toast and New Doctor's Orders Vanilla Hazelnut. Yum! <laughs> Make sure to use code 10 Don to save at checkout. Once again, that's 10 Don at coffeeovercardio.com. How long have you two been together? Uh, well, we actually broke up in August, but we were. Oh, okay. he, um, he's been in our lives, in mine and Milo's life, since Milo was one. Oh, good. So, yeah. <gasps> and he lives in Utah. He does. Okay. That makes it easier, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that oh he God. lives here? Yeah. Well, you're from, you're from back east. I am. Yeah. I'm from Ohio. Right. Um. Yeah, he lives in Utah, uh, but we just, like, we don't talk anymore. Like, we broke oh, up, okay. and now it's just, it's whatever, but. Yeah, but you're able to co-parent well, it sounds like, just based on what I've heard, you know. Oh, so me and Milo's dad do not co-parent well at all. Okay. so And it is a disaster. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, so that is, like a new struggle well, yeah like not new course. because so he, Milo's dad is from Utah he's from um actually southern Utah like down by Bryce Canyon uh-huh and he was like always talking trying to talk me into moving to Utah well the guy I was dating um is originally from here and I met him when we were all living in um Nevada and Elko it's like uh-huh. kind of on the border I guess like okay. not that far from Salt Lake um we I met him when I was living in Elko and then he's from here and he was wanting to move back here and I'm like okay well like finally I wanted to go back to work and there was not a whole lot besides like being a man and a minor in Elko <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah oh. so I was like okay well maybe I'll just move to Salt Lake you know make everybody happy <laughs> and we dated for like over a year here in Salt Lake. But the whole time we were dating, like I was going to like custody court with my low oh. dad. He was like stealing my car, breaking into my house. <gasps> like, oh my gosh, just being a total psychopath. And I feel bad for his mom because oh. like <laughs> her kids are just a disaster. But Oh, no. <laughs> and, and it's, like, crabby because, like, I'm all the way out here, and it's, like, Milo's side of the family. So it's just, like, this whole weird balancing act. And just kind of recently, because I wanted to talk to him about fostering, like, yeah. you know, give him the chance to say if he had any feelings about it, if he mm-hmm. was, you know, concerned, you know, having a foster kid in the house with Milo. Right. You know, just kind of give him the opportunity to, like, share any kind of, like, thoughts or feelings he might have about the situation. Right. But he just, like, didn't care. So I was like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, we're just going to live our life. And on the rare occasions that you get visitation, you can just do your thing then, I guess. Oh, yeah. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Oh. So I'm like, okay. So Wow. Okay. Way to clock in and out. Yeah, no kidding. I guess all people take their parenting responsibilities and, you know, gifts differently. Yeah. But, geez. So, but yeah. yeah. How do you get your breaks then? Because as a mom, I feel like be, getting a break is just so important. Like, I can't even stress, you know, taking care of yourself and having, you know, me time. You are such a better parent when you're able to get that stuff in, you know? Yeah. I wish I could get to the point because there are so many people that I know who do Mm co-parent and they were like, you know, you're really going to start like appreciating the time because he does go with his dad every other weekend. Okay. Um, So it's like, you know, like they're like, oh, you're going to, you know, get to a point where you're really just going to appreciate it. Right. there's so many like issues that I have and concerns just like through the experiences that I've had with Milo's dad Michael that Mm -hmm. it's like it's not 
a break, you know, like right. I'm constantly oh, just yeah. waiting by my phone, right. you know, like just waiting for him to do something. And bas- <laughs> like, yeah. basically the court was like, oh, we're a hundred percent pro dad now. So until he messes up <laughs> oh, big enough, sure. They're like, you just have to do what, you right. know, deal whatever, with deal with oh, it. And I'm right. like, well, that's a really shitty way to look at it. Like, I just have to wait for him to be a shitty dad enough times for (laughs) them to be like okay we care now (laughs) right oh well hopefully as time goes on you know he'll grow up some and mature and appreciate his you know time with your son I can only hope I thought that was how it was gonna be because he was like he's always I I thought he was like joking when I first met him years ago I, I thought his like egotistical like jokes or whatever oh. were like <laughs> jokes like I didn't think somebody was really that much of like a narcissist <laughs> like, oh. and, and <laughs> as I've gotten you know to like know more about him over the years and like going through this like parenting experience with th- th- that person yes. I'm just like how is it even humanly possible that that is not a joke like he's being Whoa. serious and I'm just like I always thought, like, that's what I thought, that he would just, like, yeah. grow up Eventually and grow things would it. change and he would, yeah. you know, become an adult man and so, like, <laughs> exactly. whatever he is man now. child. <laughs> yeah. And <sighs> he would, like, get his act together. And oh. it's, like, over, like, the longer I know him, it's, like, the worse he gets. And I'm, oh. like, you're, like, going the opposite direction. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to co-parent with you and you're making it impossible. <laughs> shoot that's hard Mm -hmm. yeah it does suck yeah I can't even say I know what it's like my ex is a really great dad we actually got a house just recently in the last several months and it has a house with a guest house on the property and so he lives in the guest house (laughs) what yeah and so we technically live you know we're next door I like to say we're next door neighbors (laughs) but the kids get to go see him all the time they get to come bug him whenever and he's just around to be helpful if necessary it's just been so nice that's crazy I know it's a little bit out of the ordinary but it's doable like we get along really well and I mean we get along better now that we're separated but it's nice to be able to feel like um he's there if I need him still um I, I know I'm in a really lucky situation that we get get along so well, but I I got stuck living <laughs> with Milo's dad for a minute because yeah, <laughs> well he had a, like a roommate situation, but his roommate got a girlfriend, and he was just being an asshole to his roommate's girlfriend, so they like kicked him out, and I'm like okay fine like I'll take in this stray dog you know, <laughs> and it was. It was, like, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) But, like, I don't know. Like, I kind of get it. Yeah. Obviously, we didn't – we weren't, like – no, actually, I did. I went on one date while we were living together. Oh, yeah. How was that? (laughs) It was – I don't know. It was fine. Right? Okay, good. Like, it was, like, not a good date, but (laughs) – Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Dating world, man. Oh, wow. That's been fun, right? (laughs) Oh, man. I – it's it's so bad because I think I might be single forever just because I don't want to go through the effort of dating. Oh, right. Hey, that's not always a bad thing, you know. Single life has been good. Maybe I'll get over that aspect. But for now, I'm enjoying it, so – well, yeah, because you have, like, a live-in handyman. Oh, my goodness. I <laughs> wish it was a live-in handyman. We're not going to go as far as to say that. That's for sure. <laughs> See, I would – I don't know. Like, if I just – like, it right now, like, I don't feel like dating. So, I'm yeah. like, okay, I could totally, you know, live with Michael again because I don't want to date anybody. But then, like, the oh. second – like, when I moved here and I was um, seeing my ex-boyfriend, the one that grew up here in Utah – he had like the biggest problem with it. And I'm like, why? Why do you have a problem? Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> you don't want to be with me. So like, why do you have a problem about it? Yeah. <laughs> You're so weird. Yeah. I mean, I've had people think that it's strange that he lives on the same property, but I'm like, who cares? It's literally like we're next door neighbors. 
It's so much better for the kids. Like, I can't even tell you. My kids are just, I feel like they just have a lot of security that he's over here. Yeah. And that we get along so well. We're still able to do family things together. I just, I just think it's ideal, you know? I am so happy. (laughs) With it being like a separate guest house, I kind of see how that can be ideal. Yeah. It it was weird because, but then I had to go back to my situation. I'm like, wait, I was living. We in all the lived same. together. Yeah. Was like in the same place. Like he was just in the next bedroom. But right. That's different how, for sure. How much better <laughs> would it be if I could just kick him out in the backyard? Yep. Right. <laughs> Go put your mess in your back in your area. Like, cause especially like the difference between the way women live and most men. <laughs> it's oh. so nice to just have your clean space. It smells nice. You know, it's oh, like yeah. your oasis. It's separate than all of the stinky man and kid stuff even the kid stuff like you want to keep them at least somewhat separated I'm like don't go in my bedroom you know that's my only space in the whole house that always smells good that's always mostly clean you know oh Oh, my gosh my room is such a disaster all the time (laughs) and it's like I hate it because like I wish I had that oasis yeah but like I have I moved into a townhouse here okay and it has so much storage. Oh, so it's nice. I took, it is nice, actually. I'm not yeah. hating it. Um, <laughs> so I took all of the toys out of Milo's room. And now he just has, like, books and, like, mm. his clothes and stuff. Because he was waking up in the middle of the night. And then he'd yes. like, go see a toy. And he'd start <laughs> playing. And then he wouldn't put himself back to sleep. Yes. So I took all of the toys out of his room, and there's, like, this closet space underneath the stairs. Uh-huh. And it is, like, his little kid dungeon. Like, Oh, I love that. All of his toys are in there, and right. he has, like, um, you know, like, those little bins that you put in the cubbies. Sure. They're all separated and organized, and, like, all of his, like, bigger extra stuff, like those crawl through tunnels or tents and things Mm -hmm. shoved right in that closet that's so good uh it's like his little like kid cave or whatever yes and now his room is always so clean (laughs) but he co-sleeps with me still like he'll fall into my bed and like I'll go and we'll do the whole nighttime routine and I'll go and like I'll get him out of the bathtub and I'll go to walk into his room Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, no, 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 mommy. And then he'll point at my room. I'm oh, like, my you gosh. little shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to sleep. It, I know. It's you know, true. No one can make a king size bed feel like Small. a cot more <laughs> than a toddler, I swear. No kidding. <laughs> I was always the one that was like, no kids in my bed. I can't sleep. They just kick you. And mo- like, I like to be cool, like with the fan on. <laughs> and they just like take all the blankies. Oh my gosh. I can't have kids in my bed. It, I won't sleep. See, I'm like a sucker because when it comes to like stuff like that, like Milo, I feel will probably be like my only actual like biological child. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I know that one day he's going to wake up and he's not going to want to sleep in my bed anymore. Sure. Right. Like I'm super lenient when it comes to stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Just kind of enjoying it while you can. Yeah. Like I understand that. Like, if he wakes up and, like, he doesn't want to go to daycare, he wants to, like, stay here. Like, he has a beanbag chair in my office. Mm-hmm. And because I do work, like, oh, I, I 100% work from home now. Um, yeah. I used to have, a like, a finance job here in town, but now I work 100% from home. Mm-hmm. And so he has, like, his beanbag chair, and he has, like, a couple books, and his he'll bring his tablet in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and like watch Lion King for the hundred and fiftieth time, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> oh. but like sometimes, like if he's like, "No, I don't want to," I'm like, "Okay, yeah." I just oh. love you so much. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome that he's you know able to do that too because some kids they're so born with different personalities, they're all so different. Um, I could see a couple of my kids being willing to do that, but then maybe the other two would never do that in a million years. They would cause problems. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just be well, noisy, you know. He so. definitely causes his share of problems. <laughs> but I feel like on those days, and 
I try to keep him on a schedule. This actually, I don't know if I prepared you for this, but we do confess on this podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I did. Finally. No, but I've listened to it. enough of your podcast that I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening. Yeah, of course, um, yeah. Are you a fan of the Mommy Wines podcast? Well, of course you are, or you wouldn't be hearing this right now. One of the best ways to support the show you love besides obviously tuning in every Wine Wednesday for new episodes, is shopping the Mommy Wines merch store on teespring.com. This is where you'll find all of the Mommy Wines branded goodness, mugs to hold your coffee over cardio morning java, iPhone and Samsung cases, premium ultra soft hoodies perfect for upcoming cooler months, and of course flowy teas and tanks flattering on every mommy out there. Go shop the Mommy Wine storefront on teespring.com and make sure to use code WINEMOM for free shipping. I know. I wish I could come to Utah to visit you guys, but the snow is keeping me away. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe we'll have to make a trip to Florida. Ooh, that's a good idea. You would love it. I've I've been to Florida twice. Yeah. Um, I went to Miami. Well, I had a vacation planned before I even knew I was pregnant with Milo, but okay. it was early enough in my pregnancy that I'm like, you know what? I'm still going to go on vacation. Obviously I didn't get to drink in Miami, which was <laughs> yeah. crap, but <laughs> I went, that's where I went. I went to Miami Yeah, and I had to get like these like shots and whatever because <laughs> like Zika was going around at the time. Oh yes. Yes. But yeah, I went there and it was freezing cold. Oh, when did you go? Uh, February yeah it can get cold here I'm not gonna lie I was like and it wasn't like a cold like I <laughs> felt like winter it was right like, it's different it's like wet it's yes. wet here it's so wet <laughs> it was like 50 degrees and I was shivering down to my core <laughs> yeah I know well, also I packed like Miami style clothes like oh, a bunch of yes. like maxi strappy dresses and things right. like that so I went into a gift shop and like one of those touristy gift shops and I yes. got like a few sweatshirts <laughs> and it's like perfect lived in them <laughs> yeah it was like my mom went to Miami and only got me this sweatshirt or this <laughs> is like I heart Miami with like a spray yes. low rider. <laughs> oh my gosh I totally feel you when so I like yeah oh, go I, ahead oh no like I just ran in there real quick and they're like oh it's like two for 25 dollars oh, so perfect <laughs> perfect <laughs> it's true when I first moved down here a couple of years ago I got rid of like all of my cold winter cold clothes because I'm like oh I'm not gonna need those in Florida I like literally just left them all and gave them away and then I get down here and the whole first year I was like yeah this is the best weather ever and now I'm like freezing all the time during this winter I'm wearing tons of hoodies tons of sweaters tons of boots and I'm like dang I gotta go get all new winter clothes <laughs> well that can be fun but still a pain True. that's what True. happened to me when I moved to Las Vegas yeah I, I had a friend uh her name was Jade and she had moved from South Carolina I believe yeah uh-huh. and she's like I don't have anything I don't have yeah. any winter clothes and it was like I think her first year there mm-hmm. and in Ohio like Utah winters are like nothing to me because at so least I've it's heard. like a dry oh you know cold Just but frigid, in Ohio yeah. it's so humid it's like Florida okay. but with winter <laughs> right oh my gosh I can't even handle it I would die so it's like freezing in Ohio. Yeah. And like everything is like literally everything is frozen. Like I'm looking outside yeah. and it's like beautiful, picturesque snow. And yes. it, it's just fluffed onto the tree branches. <laughs> but no, like in Ohio, that tree would just be like a giant frozen stick. <laughs> and... No wonder you like Utah. It's like mild <laughs> com- compared. Yeah, well, I gave her, I was like, well, I'm moving to Vegas. Why don't you come over, raid my closet, take everything that you want, and then I'll just donate the rest of it. Sure. Well, I get to Vegas, and I have a a hoodie that I was wearing on the plane, and I'm wearing shorts and trainers. Uh Uh-huh. And I get off the plane, and my friend's roommate, who was picking me up from the airport, looked at me. He's wearing, like, work overalls. (laughs) 
and boots and a jacket oh, wow. and a beanie and I'm like why are you dressed like that it's Las yeah. Vegas and he's like because it's snowing outside it's 34 <gasps> degrees <laughs> whoops so I had to go get my bags for baggage claim open them up like in the middle yeah. of the airport oh gosh and I had layer to- up layer up yes I I kept my shoes on but I like grabbed a pair of sweatpants and like didn't yeah. even take my shorts off I just put them <laughs> over my denim shorts right <laughs> and, oh like, yeah got in the got in the car and went home and changed but legit oh my gosh yep. it was 34 degrees and snowing oh, when wow. I got off the plane in Vegas but it was 56 when I got on the plane in Cleveland <laughs> wow that's insane it was colder in Vegas yeah Oh, it's Not crazy. thing that I was prepared for. Yeah. So you've lived in a lot of places. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I've been all over the place. That's cool. <laughs> I think it's really great, though. I grew up all my whole life in Utah, and I just lived in Virginia for, like, one month. And then I came down here, and I really, really, really enjoyed the change and just meeting different people. There's just so much to see and learn and I love that my kids get to see and learn about so many different people. See, that is like one of the struggles I have having Milo here. Yeah. Because I've met two kinds of people, people (laughs) who left Utah and like that are from here, Uh grew up here. It's either people who left Utah and want to immediately come back or people who leave Utah (laughs) and don't come back. Yeah. And, (laughs) And it's like, so... It does concern me because, like, I lived in a small suburb, but I was, like, right in the middle of Ohio's two biggest cities. Okay. And it's just, like, I don't know. Like, I loved going into the city or even just in my neighborhood and, like, growing up with so many different people who had so many different just, like, views on life and the world. and right. Like, I had friends from, like, all over the place. and Yeah. The diversity makes such a difference. And there's so much culture to learn. I love it. Like, my son was at a little birthday party last night for his friend. And it was, like, a big, huge Mexican celebration, you know. And it was just so much culture there. He got Mm -hmm. to experience that. And it was – I was jealous, really. I'm like, I want to come and (laughs) eat all this delicious food. But, you know. You can hang out with the parents. (laughs) True. I should have invited myself. (laughs) They probably would have invited me. They're such nice people, you know. They're just so inviting and loving to everyone. I could imagine I would have been welcome. But, you know, I just love that they get to experience that. I think it's great. So, yeah. yeah. I think the only diversity I've experienced here in Utah is, like, towards me. Like, I feel like I'm the one that's different. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> what, well one of the biggest reasons um I'm working from home now is because I was like I'm, I have to go through like this whole like labor commission battle and there's like mediation and court and everything Ooh. but they basically looked at me and they're like yeah you just don't really fit into the Utah culture so we're gonna oh. let you go wow and that should was not like, be okay. I was like, what do you, like, mean? I'm like, I'm. are you talking about, like, because I'm from Cleveland? Like, uh, I'm like, what? And they're like, and then they just blatantly, like, encouraged me to move wow. back to Ohio that I just don't belong here. Oh, my and, goodness. Wow. But. That's horrible. That's yeah. just horrible. Like, we're supposed to be accepting and loving of everybody. And I've really felt a huge switch um, after I mean, I won't blame it on Utah, but, you know, just being outside of Utah and having to get out of my comfort zone and meet new people, like, I was forced to in moving. Oh, yeah. And it's just been the best thing. Like, I love it. I love getting to know people. I just want to hear everyone's stories. It really makes you a better person. (laughs) That's how I am. I'm such a curious person. Yes. Like, being from Ohio, like, Basically, the West is just one big state in, like, my previous opinion. Like, oh, it's just yeah. out West. It's just the desert. Like, gotcha. Whatever. Yeah. You know, right. I'm way True. over here. No relevance to my life at all. So when I, <laughs> when I moved out here and I started experiencing different things, I started meeting different people. And, you know, last year I moved to Utah. And, like, 
I feel like that curiosity is still there. Like I'm still really curious and I love yeah. talking to people and I think that's always going to be there, but it has been yeah. like very just like dimmed. Luckily I have Literally. my podcast. <laughs> yeah. Not, like, people like in my neighborhood, like they don't want to talk to me. Like, <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, well, they know because they don't see me. They know yeah. that I'm just a white claw drinking basic bitch. <laughs> And they don't want to be friends with me. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. No, we're going to get into good. confessions. Okay. Yes. So yeah, confession. my confession is that Milo has to definitely be on a schedule. Like, yeah, he is a kid I feel like that would voluntarily go to military school <laughs> and he would just thrive. thrive there. Yeah, I get that. No, I could see that. He has My... like a little problem with like authority. Yes. But uh-huh. I feel like they could just like scream it out of him like, or oh, whatever they do, like yeah. make him do a hundred push ups or something. Right. But, These strong-willed kids, man. I think that it's going to be a good thing for them when they're older, though. Like, it's death for us moms right now when they're little. Oh, yeah. But honestly, they still have such sweet hearts, like, underneath that, you know, authoritarian wannabe figure that they'll someday grow into. Like, for now, <laughs> as little kids, they're so – they're just so intelligent and just – oh, I love I, them, but <laughs> – I know. I have to remind myself – have you ever I think I have a meme on my on my page where it's like I love raising strong willed children just yes. make me right <laughs> oh, I know you're right but Aww. but yeah so there are times like like I was mentioning that he doesn't want to go to daycare he wants to stay at home with me yeah and after a few days like he'll get bored and he'll be like okay I'm ready to go play with some kids of course <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah like yeah. Some days he'll stay home with me. And on the days, like, when it's not always, you know, him being perfectly behaved, like, he will be yeah. like, I don't want to go to to school, but I also don't want to, uh-huh. you know, sit here quietly. I just want to pop off and be a psycho. Legit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. in order sometimes to keep him on his schedule or, like, if he – like, right now it's cold and flu. So, like, he was oh, sick yeah. and he slept in until, like, 11 o'clock the other day. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it was nice, but I'm, uh-huh. like, I'm screwed now. Oh, right, for so... that night. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I didn't True. wake him up because he wasn't feeling that great. So, I'm, yeah. like, if he needs to sleep, he can sleep. But, like – Mm-hmm. There, I have packs on packs on packs of Zarbi's melatonin. Oh, <laughs> and like there will be times like I'll be trying to work from home, and he will just be so wound so up, crazy, and not lay down for a nap to save oh my his God. life. Yeah, and I'm like, I can't. I was like, you have to take a nap because at like six o'clock, five o'clock, you're gonna be grumpy and mean and. <laughs> And like bad, and it's just like right. crazy, you know, circus in here. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my confession: is that I gave him melatonin in the middle of the day the other day, just so what? I could get some work done, and that you he could drugged sleep. your child. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I feel no shame. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't don't be ashamed. You're not the only one. Everybody does it here and there with their own with their own. So, do you things. have a confession? I do. Let's see. I have multiple confessions I could do, but you know, (laughs) (laughs) let's see. Um, So I guess, you know, my kids hate chores. What kid doesn't, right? Of course they do. Yeah, of course. But like, I hate the chores worse than they do. So like my confession is, is the second my kids could learn how to do dishes, I started making them do the dishes because I hate the dishes. So (laughs) like, I never, ever, ever do the dishes. Like I'm always like, Okay, do the dishes, do the dishes. Like, I get so excited if they get in trouble and they have to go do the dishes so that I don't have to do the dishes. <laughs> See, I don't mind doing the dishes. I actually oh, kind yeah. of like it because it's like a break, but I hate, yeah. hate unloading the dishwasher. Oh, do you? <laughs> and so it's the funny. same thing with laundry. Like, I hate putting laundry away, okay, but I right. will do laundry all day, every day. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I will put the dishes away when they're clean. But for whatever reason, I hate scrubbing dirty dishes. 
like breaks my nails and it's just gross. Maybe it's because it's just gross. I don't know. It is gross. Um, so I haven't done dishes in years, maybe like <laughs> one or two. How old are your kids? And when do oh, I start my doing Milo chores? Crap. No kidding, right? Shoot. <laughs> no, let's see. No, my oldest is 10 and I started having him do the dishes probably at like seven. <laughs> Three years, dishes free, huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's that what, awesome. you know, that's his payment for getting that's food right. and shelter and clothing. And Yeah, exactly. That's what I say. And you know what? His sister does it now. So he got out of it after, like, a couple of years. She was old enough to start helping. So <laughs> I feel like kids, like, right now, Milo, all he wants to do is help me. But he's, he's three good. years old. And I'm oh, like, right. dude, come on. Like, yeah. Get out of here so I can get stuff done. Exactly. You just have to do it again after. Yeah. But then, like, by the time he's going to be old enough to actually have chores, he's going to be like, no, I don't want to. Exactly. They do. (laughs) You're right. But I don't even feel bad because the amount of chores I had to do growing up was so insane compared to what my kids do. Like, literally maybe one chore a day. And it's, like, easy peasy chores. So I don't even feel bad when they complain. I'm like, dude, you have no idea what it was like growing up when I was little. (laughs) You know, like our generation was just so much different. I don't know. Did you have chores growing up? Um, Well, it was me and my mom. So basically my whole life was a chore. I but she probably needed help. Yeah. But my friend from across the street, we were childhood best friends from like Mm -hmm. the age of three. Yeah. She had four siblings, a crazy large family. <laughs> yeah. Or she, there was four kids, so that yeah. a family of six. Right. And um, she was like not allowed to come out and play oh. or anything on the weekends. Like Friday night, she had to do homework, and then Saturday morning, she had to do these chores, and it was yeah. like scrub the entire bathroom or yeah. like you know scrub yeah. the entire kitchen including dishes and counters and clean out uh, the fridge uh-huh. and all of this stuff and I'm like wow that's how I was growing up dude I'd be in charge of like the whole entire kitchen everything top to bottom <laughs> yeah they had like this whole list where they would like rotate it I think like every week or something sure so each yeah. kid had a different room right. and like it was nice when it was like the living room because all you yes. had to do is like the vacuum, <laughs> vacuum. dust, dust. Yep. <laughs> but like when that she had so like funny. the kitchen or like the bathrooms, took forever. Oh, man. Yep. I, I would know. go over and help her sometimes because I was oh, just like, I need so to get nice. out of my house. Like <laughs> it's Saturday, let me go. That's the prison. But <laughs> so I'd go over and help her, that's and we'd like nice. rubber band sponges to her feet and like. <laughs> Like, scrub scrub the bathtub. Oh, my God. I love it. (laughs) You know, it did teach me so much work ethic, though. Um, Now, I really see a difference, you know. I just have a lot more drive, I think, came from my mom and dad teaching me to work hard. And just a lot of pride comes from that, too, being able to do hard things. And so I like to teach my kids that now. So I think it's a good thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with teaching your kids to work hard and giving them some pride you know or yeah self, it builds self-confidence you know all those things so that's true yeah. it's good. however let's see the debates <laughs> coming after this episode like do Uh-oh. you do you listeners out there do you give your kids chores or do you just good do call. everything yourself <laughs> right let's see i'll post a, a i'll post a poll on instagram for this Please. episode I love it. Good call. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) So go ahead and share with everybody where they can find you on social media, um, online, where they can check out the lashes and all the good stuff. Yeah. So I'm most active on Instagram. So you can find me at maglashbox. Um, And we also have a website and a Facebook. It's just www.maglashbox.com. And then, like, I'm on Pinterest, which is really a fun little platform that I'm just barely getting into. But that's kind of neat. But, yeah, so you can go there and do the ordering. Hopefully, it's super easy. I tried to make it super simple. Um, And, yeah, if you want to collaborate, I love to collaborate with other moms with their own businesses. So, yeah, I'm just – I just want to share my product. I think it's a great product. I think it can help women just feel beautiful. Um, My – little mantra that I have on my Instagram that's helped me kind of just 
stay in a more positive place because as you know Instagram I was a little bit worried that it would be like uh catty maybe or just I didn't want to I just I just wanted to share positivity you know yeah so I made my mantra love your life love your lashes so I like yeah and that I feel like it just made it a lot more authentic and a good a good vibe place to kind of for me to share positive things so anyway there's a lot of positive stuff going on there and I just want to be a little bit of a positive uplifter in people's lives I guess bring smiles bring a positive thought every day whatever stuff like that you know (laughs) yeah well I know a ton of the moms um own like some of them own like small boutique brick and mortar stores some of them own online like online boutiques do you do like wholesaling or are you in any retailers yeah, I'm actually drop shipping for this cute little boutique called Hula Boutique that I just started with like last week. So yeah, I do drop shipping or you can buy wholesale if you have like a salon or anything. Then I've tried talking to a couple. I haven't quite gone around to it. I'm hoping to at the beginning of the year, but it's a little busy for Christmas. But I would love to have other people carry my product if they're interested. Um, yeah, it's a super easy upsell for spas and salons for sure because you know you do hair and then your stylist has great lashes and you're like what I want those cute lashes (laughs) (laughs) yeah for sure stuff like that but yeah perfect well I will leave the links to all of your information um in the show notes below this episode so definitely welcome go reach out everyone to Amber if you want to work with her um but yeah it was awesome having you on the show today Yeah, thank you for having me. You're welcome. (laughs) All right, we'll talk soon. Okay, sounds good. Bye. All right, bye. Today's episode of the Mommy Wines podcast was brought to you by NakedWines.com, Zaya Active, and Coffee Over Cardio. Do you love the show? Show your support by shopping the Mommy Wines podcast merch store at teespring.com or by becoming a monthly supporter of the show by clicking the support button at anchor.fm backslash mommy wines or you can use the support link in the show notes below have you been wanting to start your own podcast join the mw podcast network all info on the mw network merch partnerships coupon codes episodes blog posts and so much more can be found at themommywines.com as always thank you for listening and until next week wine moms parent and drink responsibly